Hey, uh, two people asked me almost the same question on the previous video where I said that uh, technical audit, independent technical audit has to identify uh, the gaps between the industry standards and the way your team is developing the software. The larger the gaps, the higher the risk, the lower the maintainability potentially when you lose your programmers and you will lose some of them or maybe all of them eventually. So the question is, uh, what do I think about uh, elegant objects concept, which I'm a big fan of, you know, I'm the author of a few books which are called elegant objects and I'm a, a big um, fan of the right object oriented uh, approaches, which contradict with the way the entire industry is developing software. I am against uh, getters and setters, I am against static methods, I am against annotations in Java, I am against uh, factory uh, methods, I am against many things which the majority of software developers and frameworks and libraries are actually uh, all about. So the question is, Andre is asking and Gusein is asking, what if the team is developing the software the way I think they have to develop the software using uh, my methods of object-oriented programming and then the audit comes on board and uh, compares that approach with the industry standard and says that uh, it's completely wrong, You're doing, you guys are doing something uh, the way nobody will understand in the future. That's a reasonable concern and my only answer is that you're right, you're absolutely right. Everything that goes against the industry is risky is a huge risk for maintainability. It may be a good idea, definitely is. Like elegant objects, I believe, is a great idea, is the way object-oriented software has to be developed. But I understand that if you use uh, object, uh, elegant objects in your product, then you are at a bigger risk comparing to the situation where people use Spring Framework, for example, which is standard, which is supported by hundreds of thousands of programmers in the world. So it's, it's a balance between what's good and what's standard. And if you want the maintainability, then definitely you should go for the standard one. Or you ask your programmers who want to experiment, who want to develop things the right way, then you have to ask them to document everything more intensively than they would do if they would use Spring Framework, for example. If some of the programmers say that I'm going to develop it the, the way uh, Elegant Objects book is suggesting, then you have to tell those programmers that, of, okay, you can do that, but we're going to need more code reviews, we're going to need more independent reviewers, we're going to need more documentation, we're going to need more explanation of why you're doing things this and that way. So we're going to need more uh, things on top of your software to protect us from the situation when you quit. We don't want to lose everything when you experimental, uh, brilliant, bright programmers one day decide to go somewhere else. We don't want to stay with uh, something which nobody wants to maintain in the future. We want to stay with the product which is a product, which is uh, a solid piece of software, which is understandable by the majority of people around us, by the majority of programmers in the world. And if you're using something experimental, no matter how good it is, no matter how bright, how perfect it is, it's a risk. So answering your questions, guys, you're definitely right. Elegant objects is a great concept, but it's risky for a proprietary commercial project. But as I said, it's perfect. I mean, it's way better than Spring Framework, but it's more risky. So compare, find the balance, and uh, every time you decide to use something experimental, something great, something new, you have to understand that that brings not only great features to your software, but also a great risk of losing maintainability because you may not find enough programmers on the market to understand what's going on with this software, what's going on with this library, what this protocol is doing and how it works. And every new programmer who will come on board later will definitely tell you that, okay, maybe it's okay, maybe it was good, but now we need to remove it all and develop it the right way, the standard way. I've seen it many times in my, in my projects. Many times people come to my projects, good programmers, especially good for really professional programmers, and they start with saying that you're doing it wrong. Something is not standard here. It's not typical. People don't develop software in Java this way. We need to redesign it all and start it, you know, doing the, the traditional way. And it takes time for me to explain them that, you know, my way is actually better. And let me explain you how my way works. 
please, please read this article, that article, this blog post. Some of them understand, some of them are interested to learn, but the majority just tell me, no, you know, I don't want to learn that stuff because it's in the minority. You are in the minority. You're just some experimental crazy scientist who is suggesting to develop software in a different way. We better go the standard way. That's how we make more money. So it's risky to be new, to be better. It's way less risk to go the standard way, no matter how bad it is. I don't think I answered your question. I don't think I, I brought you good news. But anyway, thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.